Here you go. Thanks. Uh. Huh? To my drink. I you I you. You what? You asked for a couple of ice cubes in your drink, and I only put in one. <laughs> hey, yo, how's it going, everyone? Entropy here today with another video. Today we're going to be doing another week of big news. This week bigger than last. I know, surprising, surprising. But last week we saw the first grade four unit exculpate. In Vanguard Zero, this week we'll see more. But to begin, let's start with some JP news. So with Pale Moon, we got some reveals with Miracle Pop Ava, the uh, Break Ride unit for Pale Moon. Break Ride plus 10 skill. It gives the unit, uh, when it attacks, put two reguards into your soul to call two from soul. And when it attacks, it gets Soul Charge 1 and plus 1k, similar to the Genesis Break Ride. So this is very interesting. You get to do some very many shenanigans with it and it doesn't really require any keywords like silver Thorn, for example so you can definitely splash this into existing uh builds of pale moon and you can do a lot of stuff definitely a lot of stuff to play with next we have nightmare doll chelsea this card is a double rare limit break four when it attacks a vanguard it gets the following ability until the end of turn at the end of the at the end of the battle kind of last two persona blast and call two cards from your soul when this unit gets boosted, it gets plus three. So this is similar to um, the Catapult unit from Spike Brothers. Um, is this going to see a lot of play? Probably not, but it's definitely a great budget deck option. And um, it's, it's something you can definitely test with. Next up, we have some Dark Irregulars. So we're going to start with Ammon's Follower, Fate Collector, Forerunner, 5k. At the end of the battle, this unit boosted. If your soul has six or more, uh, six or more cards, put this into your soul, draw two, and put a card from your hand into your soul. This card's interesting and definitely will probably see play because you can definitely put some cards that trigger in soul. Um, and then you can do a lot of shenanigans with that. Next up is Ammon's following Hell's Draw, grade two, 9K. When placed, if your Vanguard is an Ammon, so it works to add an Ammon's follower Hell's Trick with heal to your deck for each heal put into your soul by this effect. So this is definitely very nice. Uh, we first saw these kind of uh, trigger fixing from Soul Charge in Genesis with the Fortuna support in set 11. And now we were, we we're getting that extended into other Soul Charge clans like uh, Dark Regulars, which is great. Um, you know, it's definitely one of the problems is Soul Charging triggers. And this definitely does um, provide a way to mitigate it. Even though, obviously, you might prefer having your Edel Rose or your Chariot in your deck um, as the heal trigger, as they can go back to the deck. But at least you'll have a heal nonetheless. Next up, the boss unit of Dark Railers for the set, Ammon himself. De Demon Marquee, Ammon Reverse, Grade 3, Triple Rare, Dark Railers, 11k. Limit Break 4, once per turn, lock a rear guard to get plus 1 for each card in soul. If you have six or more, it also gets plus one crit. So counter, uh, so counter blast less, just lock one, get power, get crit, very nice. In addition, if you're if you have ten or more in soul, you can counter blast two to retire one of your opponent's rear guards. That's very nice. Uh, not uh, not unsel uh, unselectable like original. I'm on this card can let you choose which rear guard to get rid of. So get rid of your opponent's intercepts and go for a face. It's very nice and cross ride definitely. In addition, we got King of Mass Nantarian. The break ride unit of dark regulars when break ride plus 10 uh, until end of turn it gets the following ability um, in addition soul charge three uh, the skill is all of your regards gets plus one for each card in soul so all of your board will get super super big in addition when it attacks uh, soul charge one get plus one so this is similar to the pale moon one um, and similar to the uh, to the genesis uh, break ride and nextly echo of nemesis this card was a fighter's collection unit so this is very neat uh, double rare as well, so very nice. Number break four, when it attacks, if your soul has 10 or more cards until end of battle, this card gets plus 10, and your opponent must randomly discard a grade three from your hand to discard a, uh, to activate a Sentinel. If not, it does not activate. So this is like a Glory Maelstrom-esque skill without the CB2. Of course, it doesn't have the crit pressure, but if your opponent's at five anyways, very, very nice. And lastly, once per turn, you can put a grade three or greater from your soul into your drop zone to soul charge two. So yes, this does not mitigate the trigger situation like Hell's Draw, but 
at least you'll get something compensated. You know, you get an extra soul um, for losing that one grade three, which I think is a, is a very nice um, skill as well. Except just a maintenance notice. We have uh, Shuka's birthday. And then we have some great nature reveals. Honorary Professor Chat Noir, which is the break ride for great nature. Triple rare, when rolled upon, your Vanguard gets plus 10. And skill, when it attacks a Vanguard, one of your rearguards, rearguards get plus 4 until end of turn. At the end of turn, draw one and retire that unit. And when this attacks, get plus 3. So it's a 14k attacker. Um, the plus 4 definitely can uh, come into play. Um, and again, this card doesn't specify any keywords, so that's very nice. Uh, next up is School Punisher Leopold Reverse, grade 3, 11k. Uh, obviously, it's Leopold. He, he looks sick. He looks sick. Number break 4, lock a rearguard to have two of your rearguards gets plus 4. And then until end of the turn, it gets the following abilities. Retire it at the end of turn. And then when it gets retired during your end phase, call it to an open rearguard circle. So very like the original Leopold. It's about giving them power, retiring them, plusing off those skills, and then putting them back onto the board so you are not left defenseless. Um, and then when it attacks the Vanguard, you can counter blast 2 to stand one of your rearguards, give it plus 4, and retire that at the end of turn. Um, the retires, you know, if you if you stack retired, like plus 4 retires, they just retire once at the end of turn. So you don't have to worry about that. And this is also very similar to Polaris. So surprise to surprise, they added the Polaris. They merged basically Polaris and Leopold and turned it up a notch. Of course, it costs a bit more with counter blast 2 or lock. But it's very nice to have both skills at once. Definitely very cool. Uh, and next, we have Cable Sheep, the new Sentinel for uh, Great Nature. So that's very cool. This this art looks very sick. Next, we have the o Oracle Think Tank uh, reveals. Battle Sister Parfait, Grade 3, 11k, Limit Break 4, when it attacks, if you have two or more cards in your hand, plus 3, and the following ability, when it hits a Vanguard, draw one card, and then Counter Blast 2, draw a card. So it's very plain and simple, draw or draw. Um, draw during main phase, draw during battle phase, do whatever you need to do to draw cards. Balshister Coquette, skill 9k. When this unit attacks, hits. Caramel last one to check top card. If it's a Balshister, add it to your hand. If not, put it to the bottom of your deck. So that's really neat. I mean, Balshisters getting support is very nice. They definitely do need it. And not, not too shabby, I'd say. Very bland. But, you know, sometimes all you have to do is, is do good stuff, right? Draw cards is always nice. And lastly, we have Battle Sister Lemonade, 1k, Soul Blast 2, Counter Charge 2. So if you are playing a more Counter Blast heavy build, then you can definitely refund it. And Battle Sisters don't really play with the soul anyways, so there's that. Next up, there is a guaranteed triple rare gacha at the end of um, at the end of the season, as we usually do. And then the big, big part. Yeah, so anniversary. Remember when they said that they were gonna get 20 packs? You're gonna get 100 packs over the course of December. So, last time we saw that they were gonna split up, you know, two anniversary gachas, Aichi and Kai, with respective clans. This time we're gonna see which cards are gonna be featured in it. For example, Majesty Lord Blaster is gonna represent Royal Paladin. We're gonna get Fromage to represent OTT, well, because there's Battle Sister support. We're gonna get Raging Form Dragon for Shadow Paladin, Gancelot for Gold Paladins, etc., etc. And definitely more from other clans, uh, other of the above clans as well. And then for Anniversary Gachakai, you will get Descendant, Dauntless Drive, you know, Nebula Lore, Glory Millstorm, definitely all great cards. Um, and this is a great way to catch up on clans. For example, if you're interested in playing with uh, Leopold Reverse, then maybe you want Leopold and maybe you can go for Anniversary Gachakai. Um, you can definitely see a lot of great cards highlighted here. Descendant is still a very prominent card. Ethics Buster is still a really popular card. Raging Form as well. So if you are interested in JP, maybe this is a great time to jump ship. Um, 100 packs is a lot. In addition to login packs, just making a new account. Um, and you can definitely go specialize in certain, certain clans through the gate from this as well. In addition, everyone gets a login bonus for December 5th. You will get an Alt Art Blaster Blade, Alt Art Dragonic Overlord, Sleeves for the Anniversary, um, Titles, 10 Anniversary Packs, and Aichi and Kai. Something that I'm wary of, honestly, um, is that they are specifying which gachas you can use do with the packs. Um, and I am really afraid 
of if they're going to do this in the future. Like if the packs that you save right now can only be used for certain gadgets or from moving forward, um, yes, that will make more money for Game Studio, obviously, because you can't hog anymore. But it might mean that your approach to gem management and pack management would be slightly different. And uh, maybe maybe the VP rewards, you know, for the 10 packs aren't going to be as good as, as it should. Maybe I'll do a video for this later, but there are a lot of implications with what they're doing right here. Splitting up the packs for set 9, 10, 11, and 12, like specifying which gacha you can use them for. So, so consider that. Um, next, there is anniversary medals. Um, there's team function added. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, so anniversary medals, they're going to be the old type of premium medals, 15 for a double rare and 50 for a triple rare. So not SP medals, it's just normal triple rare medals. Um, and you will access them with the, the different banners here. So that's really cool. You know, if, if for example, you don't really want to play stuff from the new set, you want to use your, your packs from the new account for set 12, for example, you want to play Shadow Paladin, Revengers, or like Joker, for example. You can still definitely roll that, collect some anniversary medals, and then exchange for the missing pieces that you want. So that's really neat. Um, and then this is the team function. So this is clan function, um, add your friends and all that. So when Global gets this, if we get to that point, then maybe we can get a we can get an entropy little clan going. But uh, depends on what you're all interested in. Guild. And then there's a friend fight notification. So they will tell you that there's a friend fight now. Um, I think right now we do have that, but it's uh, it's only on the homepage. So definitely nice to have. We get skins. We have the Asaka skin and the Tetsu skin. Apologies for Pale Moon and Darker Regulars. And we also get the Psyqualia um, Chris skin back in play. Then for the V coupons, we will be getting Vermilion and uh, what's her name? The Bermuda Ride Chain back up and new sleeves for them. So if you missed out on Vermilion specifically, you should go pick up that. New Batama Clan event in November, uh, in December 4th, we will be getting, you know, obviously some ninja aesthetics and we're, we're going to get to play as the ninja master himself. Um, we get some reveals for... Kagero, Novo Roman Dragon, it skills when placed. If your Vanguard is grade 2 or less, return a grade 4. Novo Vague from your hand to your deck to add a grade 3 from your hand. So it, it's more consistent than the Royal Paladin with the Escalpate because you have this card. Um, next, we have Novo Critic when placed. If your hand is Transcendence Dragon, Dragonic, Novo Vague. Or if your Vanguard is that card, can last one to retire one of your opponent's rear guard. So it's a cheaper Berserk Dragon conditional one. Um, but most of the game, you definitely do want to be on Transcendent on Nouveau Vague, or you were supposed to in the TCG, um, or you will probably have it in your hand doing nothing. So that's nice. Uh, Cruel Dragon is also an interesting card. Triple rare. Uh, Limb Break 4 when it attacks a Vanguard. Soul Blast 1, Camel Blast 1, retire one of your opponent's rear guard. And if your opponent's rear guard was retired this turn, rest your grade 2 or greater Vanguard to ride this as stand. If you rode from a grade 2 draw in card, so it gets to let you jump a ride, so you can go into grade 4. Um, on, on schedule um, and they rest they, they make you rest the great tour greater vanguard so you can't like attack with the vanguard and then rewrite this card um, but I guess that's an interesting change um, definitely nice to see that they've considered that and then of course the boss unit transcendence dragon dragonic nouveau vague grade 4 13k so blast 3 counter blast 3 persona blast retire all of your opponent's rear guards and then in addition, you have a skill. During your turn, if your opponent's damage zone has five or more cards, all of your opponent's trigger effects are nullified. Uh, they got rid of the sentinel, uh, the, the guard restrict. They got rid of the um, the rear guard requirements and all that stuff. It's a watered down Dragonic Nouveau Vague. Is that for better or worse? We will still have to see. Um, I'm sure they play tested it, but at the same time, you know, just just looking at the face value of this card, maybe sticking to the end is just more consistent, right? So like Dauntless, the end, and all that stuff, so who knows? Next up, Sentinel Metal Exchange, we'll get the uh, Amon Follower, Silverthorn, and Cable Sheep, new PGs. Um, from maintenance, you will log in to get three packs, three anniversary gacha tickets every day. You'll get five gacha picks and all that, 10 packs for the new release. And then comeback bonus or new player bonus, you will get 10 set 9, 10 set 10, 10 set 11, 10 set 12, 
and then repeat uh, four days, five to eight, total for 80 packs, 20 for each set from nine to 12. So that's really cool. But again, one of the problems that I'm wary of is what if they restrict our packs to specific um, gachas or banners, right? What does that, what, th there's a lot of implications to that. And maybe they're testing the waters with this. I think it's definitely a good way to, to let beginners test out a little bit of everything, but it also means that if you're trying to make a new account, aiming for a specific deck, it's gonna be harder. It's definitely gonna be harder. Um, but you know, more packs, always good packs, right? Next up for some reveals, you know, the thumbnail for this video, we have Shura, Stealth Dragon, Kud Kujiri Kongo. So this is the break ride. When rode upon, your Vanguard gets plus 10 and your opponent binds a random card from your hand. Return that card from the bind zone to the hand at the end of turn. Then your opponent discards a card from their hand at the, at the end of their next turn. So I think this card is definitely more complicated. Like the text is more complicated in the, in the zero variant, um, but I think it's meant to balance it out. Hand destruction is really strong and giving your opponent a turn to act and like play around it is definitely, you know, better than nothing. I mean, your opponent's not gonna play out the PG, but, but uh, you know, it still gives them a chance to do stuff with it. Next up is the second, the grade two triple rare, a stealth beast Tamaga, Tama Hagane. Uh, grade two 9K, when placed, bind one of your opponent's rear guards, return that card from the bind zone to the hand at the end of the turn. Very strong, you know, it's basically a pseudo, pseudo, um, pseudo desert desert gunner you know you can nullify your opponent's intercept by just getting rid of it from the board um the bad thing is sometimes you can desert gunner and then still attack into it this card won't let you do that because it's literally off the field but still nice to have that option nonetheless so your offense is is, is still working tournament check that out and then birthday for mr luard guy so there's that that's jp news it's a long mouthful Next up for global news, what do we have for global? We have Black Friday sales for the whales. Ah, it rhymes, I like that. Um, they didn't even bother including the price tag. I'm not really sure. I don't really pay attention enough for these sales, but I mean, I'm sure it's worth more than usual, right? Hopefully, you know, logically. Um, so if you are interested in getting more gems, go check them out. Next up, we have the campaign for the Storm of the Blue Cavalry launch. So you get sleeves and then there's like little social media events where they, they make you retweet or like like the post and stuff like that. So do that. I mean, they're gonna give it out anyways. You know, last time we failed it, but you know. And then VP double campaign that started um, a few hours ago. And then we have the newsletter for this, for this coming month with set 10. Again, we talked about the set, so if you are uh, not familiar with it, go check out my video on it. We cover what's the banner, what clans, um, which should be you know evident here, um, what clan events, and all that good stuff. Christmas memories, uh, super cute wingle right here. <laughs> but uh, this is probably gonna be a rerun of the JP Christmas event. Um, and I'm interested in what they're gonna do, um, you know, with with the uh, other seasonal events, you know, cause it, it, it is, we're getting the December events on December, but what about like Halloween and stuff, right? Like, are we gonna get it in like fe January or February? It's gonna be interesting, but nonetheless, it's very cool to have finally get those Santa Claus skins. And that is basically it. That is news for this week. This is news for Global and JP. And I think this video has been really long, a lot of reveals, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, let me know what do you think about the implications of the packs, right? Like, is this a one-off thing? Is this a one-off thing? Is this what they might be trying to do moving forward? Um, and, you know, what are you, what, what, what do you think about it? Um, and let me know down below. And uh, I hope to see you all soon. If you like the video, do, sh do like the video, share the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.